Well, good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for gosh, April 8th, 2022. Beautiful day out today. And man, the energies feel different and good today. Holy smokes. So, um, as usual, um, if you are here live, please do check in here on the chat side. I actually left something special here for everybody who is here live today um, with a offer here that you will find down in the chat tab. Um, and if you are here with questions, please do drop your questions on the questions tab. Um, if you would like to join us live and you're not here live, just uh, sign up for the newsletter. That'll tell you when we are doing our lives. If you're watching on YouTube right now and thank you for being here. So, oh my goodness. Um, there's been some major, major things happening here energetically in the past few days. Um, well with us and with the tools. So we, um, you know, we were talking about the the wisdom generator a while back and um, the wisdom tensor field generator. And we finally have the energetics ready to go. Now we're kind of blown away by this. Um, we, we were working on, and hello everybody this morning. Um, Gosh, we got people from Minnesota, Hawaii. Hey, Nat from Nebraska. Connie from Maine. Um, so just saying hello there. Um, so we've been talking about this new wisdom generator here um, that we created, gosh, a few months ago, and it just wasn't ready to come in. Um, there wasn't... It just wasn't ready to come in yet. So here, what was it? Uh, not yesterday, the day before. Um, God, maybe it was yesterday. I, actually, I think it was yesterday. We um, we worked on anchoring in anchoring in the energetics of these generators, as well as a ah, new Taurus, the Alchemist Taurus, and the Wisdom Generator. Um. So when we looked at everything yesterday, there's been a huge shift in the tools now, um, or at least these new tools. So the Wisdom Generator and the Alchemist Taurus, this one's a prototype. The, the new Taurus is actually going to have a thicker center ring, and it'll be assembled by Brenda. So it'll be a lot prettier because I didn't use a jig to, to assemble this one. But between the Alchemist Taurus and the Wisdom Generator, there is a new energy and this new energy is not necessarily pulling, you know, like all the frequencies and properties from the third templates and all that stuff. Those are still in here, but the main energetic component of these two new rings is the soul sun. Now we created a Ascension chamber. I think it was, I don't remember what year it is. Let's see if we can look back here and see it. There's an ascension chamber right back here. It's uh, it's one that has this steel structure um, in the back. I guess you can't really see it too well. One of our good friends out on the East Coast, Chris Martell, has one of these too, um, this particular ascension chamber. And there was a lot of people that when you sit in it, it catapults you to a space and place where you are a creator of a universe. You are a central sun. It is, it's you as a soul. It's you as that magnificent, powerful creator. So that is the component. That is the, the energetics of these two new tools is well, we're going to probably try a meditation out. I don't know if I'll be able to hold the space, but we're going to try a meditation here today of going in and being in the space that these new tools hold. Um, this is a huge shift. 
Um, so actually we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about them when we do the meditation here towards the end, we'll go ahead and jump into the questions here. Um, but yeah, we're pretty excited because it's, it, it is totally a new energy and it could not be here until now. So I guess I'll just keep talking about it. Um, basically because these were made here a while ago and they just weren't ready yet and the people weren't ready and that's it is that we have to wait for the energies to be ready for for us to be to utilize these so it's our understanding that we are right in the middle midpoint of the great shift there's other people out there speaking about this like a loon and joy um a loon and joy Ixtalan that we follow she you know she talks about it too of what she's getting from her guidance is yeah we are very much in the middle of this great shift and um that means that everything the old paradigm the old world we are stepping right here and so as we've been releasing this and because this is what we've been doing with the consciousness work this is what we've been doing with the tools is we've been releasing all of this old paradigm um all of our identity our identity as in I am my trauma, I am my belief, I am my emotion, I am nothing more than a human. Um, you know, I am just at sway of, of all energies, you know, things like that. It's the old disempowering paradigm that we are stepping out of. And as we are in this midpoint, it is like Aluna Joy says, it is basically taking baby steps as we step into this new energy, new creation, and new way of being. It's a whole new paradigm shift. And that's what we've been doing with the consciousness work as far as, um, you know, everything in the past couple of years, working with this chalice energy, um, surrendering to the soul, um, things like that. So right now we are at that midpoint where we are stepping in and creating um into this new into the new energy um and it's exciting right now so anyway <laughs> uh it's good to hear from some of you guys here on chat um so yeah we'll go ahead and jump in and do some q a here so um let's see i did have one question from the from email so let me pull that one up um let's see unless marin are you on here today marin springsteen because we have some questions from you um Okay, I'm not sure where it's at. Uh, my friend Dwin um, wrote in and asked about a tool that can protect you from energy vampires, from people who steal your energy. And, you know, really a tool can help bolster your field, but it's not going to stop somebody from siphoning it off. Um, the thing that you can do for, for people who are, who take energy. So there, there had this really wild realization over the past year. Um, actually it was from taking some coursework from, from Adama St. Germain in the Crimson Circle. And, it was it was quite the realization of what they call and they just call it an energy virus a virus in consciousness basically it is spelling out the whole concept of how people play in the energy of the giving taking the stealing energy um it is something that we that we all play and as part of that whole victim and perpetrator concept of duality and and is this energy stealing and many people do it it's 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 an unconscious thing they can be great people but they unconsciously take energy from people it's just what they've known and um once you are aware that this happens 
and that it happens on all levels, um, interpersonal stuff that you can see it. And simply all you do is say, no, I do not participate. So really for people who are draining you of energy, you can wear, you know, a pendant and it's going to help, you know, bring in your infinite amount of energy because we all are infinite. But the best way to keep them from siphoning off because they're not going to stop siphoning is say no more. Um, you can say it to yourself. You can say it to them. You don't have to say it to them. They might not even, probably not even conscious and aware that that's what they do. But you can just say it to your field, to yourself, to your awareness. Say, no, no more. I do not participate in my giving and, and stealing of energy. And once you're aware of it and you say it, it shifts. So that's that would be my recommendation for, for the energy vampires is just to say no more. So you have free will choice on whether you wish to serve them or not. And, you know, and you can just say no, no more buffet. Um, all right. So the other questions um, from the internet. I'm just going to check in and see if Maren was here. All right. We'll jump over here to questions. Kathy just saying, purchase the everything ring and wow, <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's quite, quite, the, quite the energy field. Okay, so our first question today, Kendall, will the wisdom generator have, have the non-bracelet version? Um, yeah, so basically with the wisdom, with the wisdom generator and these, this new energy, is basically going to be all the tools that we create from here forward are going to be in this new energy. And I'm assuming that all the old tools are going to slowly fall away. Who knows? Maybe they'll even all get changed to this new energy because this new energy is, it, this is, this is a huge, huge concept of, um, and we'll, we'll look at it more when we go into the meditation with this, um, here later, but, yeah, as far as the wisdom generator right now, um, we're going to be releasing these wisdom generators next week. Um, probably next Friday, once we get enough stock built up. So, um, and we got to do time studies on them yet. So the wisdom generators are right now, they're going to be available in this three and a half inch, which fits great over my wrist. Doesn't have to be wore as a wrist, uh, as a bracelet. And then we have this smaller 222 version, which, um, you know, that smaller version is great for smaller hands and wrists, but it doesn't have to be used as the bracelet generator. Totally. You know, you just put it up into the spherical form and set it and, and let it do its work. Um, and, and we'll, once we release this, we'll go into more detail on working with it, but, um, we will in the future create a lot of other tools with this specific energy, whatever this energy is. Um, right now, again, we're just calling it the wisdom generator and the alchemist Taurus. Um, we will have, we will be re-releasing the gateway tab probably also in this new energetic. Um, and that'll be here in a week or two as well. And then we'll just start building off of tools from there. Cause I'm not sure exactly where things will be going here. Um, okay. So question here from Elaine, I will be living for a while near power lines. Is it best to get the four grid points and place them in the four corners of the house? I have a 29 inch ring and any other suggestions. So living near the power lines, um, you can use any of the environmental tools such as the grid points. I mean, because if you are drawn to using the grid points, yes, they'll be very effective for working with the EMF or the power line. Um, you know, and uh, you can just get a tensor field generator too, um, or either, or, uh, but the tensor field generator will cover, you know, that two and a half mile. Um, and then the grid points, basically where you grid out your house, it'll cover your home. Um, so e any of the fields that we create that work through the environment, whether it's a generator or a grid point or a pyramid, um, 
or Gaia Sphere or Activate or any of the environmental tools will will work for that. Um, and again, it's just kind of going with what you are drawn to. So if you are drawn to the grid points, then yeah, I'll go with those. And otherwise, I would probably just suggest a generator just because it's simple, easy, set it, forget it. Um, just depends on how you want to work with the tools. As far as the 29 inch ring that you have there, um, just sleeping within that column because again the rings create a column of energy so if you are sleeping in your bed we usually suggest taking that large ring the practitioner ring and putting it on the headboard or the wall so that you are sleeping within this column of light um, and then you know it'll transform all the electromagnetics that are coming through uh, linda how far does the wisdom generator go out um right now it innately covers about the size of a home um but when your attention is onto it you can expand this field to your imagination limits so i mean you can expand this field across the whole universe and hold it there if you can see the universe and hold it there and it will stay expanded for as long as your attention is onto it. As soon as your attention is off, your awareness is no longer on there. It shrinks back down and covers about the size of the home again. Uh, Johan, will the wisdom generator bracelet be big enough to fit a two inch crystal sphere inside? Oh yes, certainly. So the, the two wisdom generator bracelets we have, this one is a three and a half inch opening. Um, and the other one is a three inch opening. So you most certainly will be able to. Uh, Victoria, do you think it's possible to still pick up an entity even with a generator in the room and a grid point under the bed? Brenda picked up an entity on my husband who is suddenly acting erratically despite being most of the time in the room with these tools, thanks. Uh, yes, so <clears throat> here's the thing you guys is that it was about almost, it was about a year and a half ago that um something occurred that there were no more entities like free willy running around causing havoc um we found a few entities that were you know attached to people soul contract style of the lifetimes that were affecting here and now um but those were very far and few in between same with energetic implants I mean, we hadn't seen energetic implants in years because we created the tools that would dissolve those when they come into the field but okay so the past i don't know two three weeks maybe longer longer um entities energetic implants holy crap energetic implants left and right uh if you don't know about energetic implants basically as you raise the frequency and vibration these things um exist within our field and they manifest kind of into the physical as like you know i had one in my back here last week it was just like a rod and it was stuck in my shoulder blades and you know just knocks it knocks your body out of whack i mean it pushes bones and muscles and hurts and then it has little threads and you know it was affecting my neck and everything um you know so there's been implants coming back again um and there's been a lot of entity attachments and, and you know it's not like they're just coming in and you know it's not the free will the the guys who are just coming in and you know in unexpected times and attaching to us these entities are usually ones that we have walked with for lifetimes and so right now as we are integrating everything that we are as a soul we are bringing in our light we are bringing in all of our soul aspects we're integrating everything as a soul when we bring those in in certain you know we can use things like the wisdom field when we are bringing things in and it will transform you know the good the bad the ugly the beautiful it transforms that into light into wisdom into consciousness as we bring that in but there's something that as we are bringing in just automatically anyway all of our parts all of our soul aspects so if there's a soul aspect like a soul aspect is just another part of your soul it's an incarnation maybe it's another lifetime or an experience so let's say this other lifetime you had that energetic implant so as you are incorporating that aspect then that energetic implant comes in and it's like it's yours um and so you know it, it's it's not a big scary thing it's not like some being is out there you know messing with you and doing these things 
is other lifetimes and nothing can ever occur to us that our soul does not agree on. You can never violate the free will of the soul. And so all of this is about soul growth, learning and experience. So, you know, don't, don't, don't freak out about entities and implants. It's all good. It's okay. Your soul has your back. Things may be uncomfortable, but that's part of the release. It's part of the releasing process. So yes, Victoria, it is totally possible that your husband can still have an entity attachment and be around these tools right now because they have been surfacing here recently again. Um, an entity attachment, basically, it comes in and, and it shifts your thoughts. Um, you know, it's kind of like having a wayward attachment, a ghost attachment. It's simply just another consciousness in your field that affects your thoughts, feelings, emotions. Um, sometimes you even, yeah. I guess that's thoughts, thoughts, feelings, emotions. Um, and sometimes it makes people tired, things like that. So with the entities, basically right now, Brenda and I are seriously working on this to be able to put this into the field of all the tools or else just do the work for all of humanity to go through and release these new entities and these new implants that have been coming through. Um, and, and I really think that we'll be able to, because I mean, like I say, we, we've done this before, back when we had the harmony rings, we actually went through and we were able to put in everything that would clear energetic implants. And so we never saw it. We didn't see them for years. Um, so it's possible and we're going to do it. So, <laughs> you know, we'll eventually get to the point here soon where any of the tools should clear the entities and energetic implants. I have, I have faith in that. Um, and otherwise we'll just have to teach everybody how to do it, which is simple and hit or miss sometimes. Um, any plans for larger size wisdom generator for the six foot pyramids? You know, we will, yeah, when we start making, um, and we'll make the Gaia spheres, the, uh, versus the generator, the generator that has the four rings versus the Gaia sphere that has the six. And we use the Gaia spheres on the pyramids cause that is connecting into the heart of the earth. Um, and so, yeah, definitely we'll eventually be switching probably almost all of our tools at some point in time in the future to this new energy. Um, yeah, it's because it is so phenomenal. It's, it's what we've been, it's what we've been looking for. Um, I think we kind of got to a new plateau here for a minute. We talked about a pyramid with an upside down reverse pyramid below. It's not quite the same, but I stacked three different pyramids, two are twisted sage on three shelves, one above the other with crystals and tensor rings. Wow. It was powerful. Any recommendations about grouping pyramids? You know, um, no, I, I, I don't have any suggestions or information about grouping the pyramids or recommendations. Um, I'd say just keep playing. I know that I, I might have mentioned it here a while back too. I was playing with that whole concept of when I was pouring pyramids, I was I actually created a really funky energy. Um, and I totally destroyed that little pyramid that I was creating as I was pouring it. But I put um, one of these pyramids. And underneath of it, I put one of these pyramids inside of here. And then I put pyramids out here on the corners. Funky energy. It, the way that energy was flowing was not beneficial, um, you know, in, in that creation. But, and, and that was me just, just kind of playing. It was powerful. Oh, my goodness. It was powerful, but it was not a fun feeling energy um but if you are working with just the tools i mean then that's when i was trying to create something new and, and i messed up with the energies but if you are working with these tools right here you're not going to be able to put them in a way that's going to cause that funny energy feeling um because these are already created they're going to harmonize and synergize with each other and you're not going to change the energetic component and flow of them I was changing the energetic component as I was building them. That's why it was funky. Um, but with the tools that are already created, they will synergize, harmonize together perfectly. So as far as, um, you know, the grouping of the pyramids, 
kind of just what we talk about using the grids. Um, you know, if you get the the Earth Grid, uh, that that Earth Grid Workers Kit, where you have one of these, um, basically, I suggest using the Ascension Grid Pyramid as like your um, as like your microphone. You know, you speak into it. That's where you put your attention for your intentions. And then you place the rest of the grid points out wherever you wish on the planet. And then you have your larger field where you can um, speak into it, interact with it right there. So, but really, um, yeah, just play, just play and see what feels right is, is really what we suggest. Um, let's see. Johan, I have the newest version of the Wings of Talk and recently bought the Quantum Heart Coil Pendant. Since they are the Wisdom Energy, will they count as part of the new tools with the Wisdom Sphere, etc.? If not, will they be upgraded? I do not have an answer for that. Um, I, I have a feeling that with this new energy that we're just stepping into right now um, with the Soul Sun, that we're just going to start from this point forward in creating the new tools all in this energy. I'm guessing, I really don't know. Cause like I say, this is only about 24 hours old or maybe 36 hours old, this energy. And so we haven't had the opportunity to really step in and play with this and see what, it's, um, see what the potentials are. Well, we, we know is has the highest potentials out of anything created because it is part of creation in the soul. Oh gosh, I can't wait to talk some more about this one in a little bit. But um, so no, for now we for now you will not be able to um, put together sets of tools to replicate this field as of yet. And I don't know where we're going with this field, but like I say, I really feel that all new tools will be created in that, and maybe we'll still be creating the old tools. I just don't know. Um, so we need to experiment because I think that this new field, anybody is going to step into it and it's going to feel good versus right now where you kind of resonate with a certain frequency because this is totally you. That's what this field is. It is, it is your soul son. Um, let's see. Um, I was just reading the second part of a question here from Victoria. Um, and it was just about the entity. All right, uh, let's see. Marie, in Herring's Law, does healing occur in reverse order of symptoms, physical, mental, etc.? In other words, things ought to be resolved, reappear to be cleared. As in Heron's Law, does healing occur in reverse order of symptoms, physical, mental, etc.? In other words, things thought to be resolved reappear to be cleared. Oh, so I, in a lot of the healing that we do, we think that we've cleared um, what it is that is coming up. And maybe so it's a past life trauma and it comes up as this emotional trauma here. We release the emotional trauma here. We're like, okay, we think we got it. But no, it still exists at the core right there. So we go to the core of the miscreation and we clear it at the core. So we're not going to sit here and peel onion to get to the core. We're going straight to the core, to the lifetime, to the experience, to the moment. Release it. Um, so... You know, totally that's the way it seems like it's always been, though, is, is we, we do the energy work, we clear something, comes back, um, you know, and that happens with this law with implants and things like that. We think we get it and we don't. Um, but really, that's where we're stepping into right now that we'll discuss more with these new fields is it's going to allow us to clear everything, everything, everything. Um, so then we won't have to... Um, you know, and then it does it all at once. So I'm not, you know, and I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the, the Heron's law on the healing, but basically we're stepping beyond any of those old structures, beliefs, paradigms, ways of being. We are leaving all of that in this old paradigm and stepping into the new, which has nothing to do with any of 
the way we used to do things. Um, it is simply simple. It's holding your light, working with the earth, allowing, and then it's done. Um, so anyway, new paradigm in the way that we're going to start working with and clearing. Um, let's see, JR, would you please explain the difference between the energy of the golden fire generator and the mini ascension grid pyramid? Oh, certainly. So the golden fire generator and the, and any of the pyramids, so the pyramids do hold that energy of the golden fire and they do send it out into the environment. So that is a similarity with any of the, the, the grid points with the ascension grid pyramid or the ascension pyramids is, is that they radiate a field and within that field, there is the golden fire. And that golden fire is what's traditionally been the best at restructuring even the harshest electromagnetics, even the 5G millimeter wave. So with, um, and so really the only, well, so that's about the only similarity really, um, as far as, as the energy signature is, is that the pyramids do radiate out into the environment, that golden fire field, but they radiate more than that. Um, because the pyramids are holding, they're holding about all the energies right now. The, the new stuff uh, that just came through 36 hours ago is not in the pyramids yet. Um, I'm assuming it eventually will be. But, um, you know, really the grid points, the grid points are actually a pretty fantastic little tool here because it's probably the cheapest thing that we sell that clears the environment and holds all of that space, um, all those different energetics. So any of the pyramids are pretty phenomenal um, for doing that work that the golden fire generator does, but then the, the grid points hold so much more because they hold the wisdom energetics, which you don't find in the golden fire generator. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of great energetics in the, in the pyramids. So let's see. Uh, let's see. In I recently got a mini wisdom wand and I'm learning how to use it. I'm practicing putting the columns of light in my house. I feel I have wired, I have wired energies. Can I put the columns of light into my kids, into my kids' beds for protection? Um, yes, you can use these columns of light everywhere. Um, you know, definitely put them in your kids' bedrooms. Um, put them in the school. Uh, put them in the workplace. I, I tell you, the columns of light is really, it's really a big deal because every time you make a column of light, you are shifting the frequency and vibration on the entire planet. We are bringing in more light quotia. We are bringing in all that energetics of the wisdom and that just permeates through and that makes things move and shift faster and easier with more grace and ease. So every column of light that you put anywhere on the planet is raising the light quotia of the planet. So go crazy with your light anchors. We, we, we need those. Um, so yeah, anybody else who's ever considered playing with that concept, please do work with those light anchors. Um, they do a lot of good just anywhere in the environment that you place them. All right, going over here to chat and seeing what's happening. Let's see. All right, so um, just making sure that all of you who may not have been here for the first couple of moments, please do check down here, uh, go to the chat side and check out what I wrote there in the very beginning. So those of you who are attending here live, um, we are offering a free water ring in exchange for testimonials. So this water ring is the, it's the wisdom alchemist ring. It, it's, the, it's the ring, single ring. Um, I bet you have one in my pocket. I do. This ring right here, um, it is the ring that the water ring that is coming with the energetic transformation kits. We don't sell these by themselves, but we're going to make them available. 
Um, we would just like to get some feedback and ex observations of experiences when using this ring. And so if you are here live and you are interested, um, check here on the chat, send an email to that address uh, along with your name and name and mailing address. And we'll email you the information, the expectations that we have of, of working with the ring, the testimonials, um, you know, and what to look for and, and some of the experiments to do with this water ring, um, working with not only water, but with yourself. And so um, we'll kind of guide you through some experiences we'd like you to try and then simply either write it down or do a video testimonial, which would love a video testimonial. Um, and then I'll just make sure that uh, we have on there too that you sign saying that it's okay to use your information um, and your video or photo uh, for posting. And um, and then when we release this ring, then you know your guys's uh, information and testimonial will also be on that page with with this new water ring. Um, so anyway. Yeah, be sure to um, go clear up on chat, and it's the very first thing. And so this, again, is only for those who are here, and we need to receive your email in the next hour, just ensuring that you are here live. And we will get to work on that. Um, so let's see. Looks like we're clear with questions. So let's go ahead and um, I just want to give you a little bit more information about this new energy. And then we'll just jump into a meditation and see if see if we can do this. So what we're seeing with these with this new field is that um, it, to me, it's simplifying everything and making this whole process into like three components. The three components of this are you as the human. So you as the human are standing right here on the earth. I'll use my hand. You as a human standing right here, the physical, the here now moment. Then the heart of the earth is connecting. She comes up and brings that beautiful blue energy around you, this beautiful blue energy. So as she brings this beautiful blue energy around you, basically she is then absorbing all of your crap. And it's okay because Gaia is a most powerful transmuter and she is here in service and she is doing this for us. So it's okay. You're not harming the earth by allowing your crap to go to her. She's got this. She said so herself. So as you stand there as a human, you're connecting to that heart of Gaia, that blue energy, that blue light, and it is just drawing the stuff. Then this is, it's, so to me, it's almost like this teardrop and then the human, and then this giant torus field, this giant cone shaped field that goes up to everything that you are as a soul and the soul sun. So we have the earth, the human in the here now moment and everything else that you are. So this soul sun, uh, okay, so this is interesting. The soul becomes brighter. The soul becomes brighter because of the experiences of the human, because the human comes in, it takes all this experience, turns it into wisdom, light and consciousness. I think it's kind of all the same thing. Well, it's called the same thing right now. Wisdom, light and consciousness flows in your soul becomes brighter your soul becomes more the work that we are doing here and that we have done for eons is all affecting the soul and making the soul brighter wiser more potent and you are that sun that central sun of creation that's huge so if we can step into this field I'll walk you through the meditation. We'll see if we can just bring this field in. Um, like I say, I haven't really worked with this, but I would love to share this. If you can grab onto it, it would be phenomenal. 
So here we go. Just going into the heart. Taking that deep breath from Gaia, that unconditional loving energy into the heart. Connecting to the heart of creation, breathing in that light. You stand as a column of light that's grounded and connected. Now we bring in this new field for all of us. And it's your individual field. So imagine that beautiful blue light and energy of Gaia coming up, just enveloping you in that beautiful blue light. And just allowing the flow to Gaia. That beautiful being that is here in service, that beautiful, powerful being. Now we connect to you, to that part of you that is a sun, a central sun in creation the center of the universe, that is all you, all your energy, all your light, all your creation. As you imagine being that creator, being the human in the here now moment in working with the earth and allowing the release of all that no longer serves through all time, What is not released into the earth is transformed. It is alchemized into a new energy, a new energy that will serve you in this new creation. Allowing the soul to alchemize all remaining energies. Beautiful. So I'd love to hear from any of you when you can or when you feel. I'd just like to know whether you got this, whether you saw it, felt it, know it. I know a lot of you did. So keep playing with this, work in those fields. Um, this is bigger than we can imagine. This is stepping us into our newness. This, this right here, right now, is what we've never done before. And we're doing it right now. Um, so yeah, yep, great peace, trembling, wonderful, and amazing. Yeah, it's, um, it's really quite the space. And again, that's where we're gonna be putting into these new tools. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I know it's a beautiful space, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So I'm just reading through here, some more of the comments, um, arms went, went up automatically felt the rush when you connected to your own son, um, powerful energy, peaceful flowing towards flowing feel like glowing warm feeling still feel the blue light working its way around me intense <sighs> yeah that is <laughs> i had goosebumps on top of goosebumps too um yeah <laughs> it's good to be here in the new creation with all of you um And 
and I'll talk about some other things next time we get together, but I'll just share some thoughts. I thought I was going to be 168 before I left this planet. I thought I'd be coming back here many lifetimes. But I really think that we're not going to be able to find the planet Earth in another 20 years or so. That by the time you get to 2050, Earth is not to be found because it is in a whole new, a whole new everything, frequency, vibration, everything. Um, I really feel that right now is the time for us to stay present. Um, awareness. Because creation only happens in the present when you are fully aware. Otherwise, you are hoping future, processing past. Creation happens right here and now. And with this exercise that we just did, you are such a powerful creator. If you kind of like to know maybe some tips on how to use that is when you're in that space, it's kind of like doing the work with the wisdom wand, but the space is so much more powerful. And all you do is you put your attention, your awareness onto something without judging it, without trying to fix it, without trying to do anything. Your soul already knows your intention what you, when you put your attention onto that. And, you know, I'm not talking about, um, you know, changing Washington DC or anything like that. I'm talking about the things in your world, not out there. Your reaction to something or somebody, um, a thought that comes up, something that you keep processing over and over again, didn't realize. Bring those hidden things up, put your attention, your divine awareness onto them and watch them shift, change, dissolve. And um, holy smokes, you guys. It's a beautiful time to be. So anyway, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just leave right now because I'll just keep chatting about the really beautiful things that I feel we're stepping into right now. And I'm just going to go and let you guys experience those. And, and I hope that you do begin to experience, um, you know, the, the unfounded joy, um, you know, just joy for no reason, because that's the true emotion of the soul is joy. And my God, I've been wanting that for all my lifetimes. And I keep getting glimpses right now and it's freaking beautiful. So I, yeah, it's a beautiful time. You guys, I'm just going to get out of here. I'll start crying or something. Take care. See you next time.